headphones or not wanting to cooperate. <laughs> Welcome back to the Project Gen X podcast. I am one of your hosts, Alan Smith, along with... I'm the other guy, Big Dave. There we go. I'm and having trouble talking tonight. Already. Yeah, well, my brain's not functioning fully yet. This is the first cup of coffee I've had today. And uh, so, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, last episode, we really we really gave you a grab bag of, of things <laughs> you didn't find something you enjoyed in that last we, episode we, we can't make you happy no we can't we started off with nick cage and we ended with nick cage talking about you know his movies and this and that and blah 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 so we're going to actually talk about a couple of Nicolas cage <laughs> movies this time uh both what, of, we, both one of which, which is brand new one of them is brand new one of them is about 10 years old now and i guess it is 10 it was released in 2011 uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Willie's Wonderland, which we teased both of these last <laughs> episode. Um, I, I Drive mean, Angry was in my recommends at the end, and uh, so I went back and rewatched. We both, Dave had never seen it. I went back and rewatched it, um, and, and we have thoughts on on all of the above. So all I'm going to say is the last episode. The last episode started with me saying I'm going to buy it. Yes. <laughs> that is basically in reference about to Willy's Wonderland. When yes. This hits Blu ray. I am buying it. And we this had not movie. seen the movie yet. No, that, that, that was, was strictly off on the trailer. The trailer, right. And now that I've seen the movie, I'm definitely buying this on Blu ray. We'll, we'll get to all that here in a minute. Um, Willy's Wonderland. Right off the bat, let's say it. It's not a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. <laughs> <laughs> that has been that has been uh, emphasized by the producers, the director, yeah. uh, the writers, everybody. Regardless of very, the, yeah. the, the similarities, it, it and is very, very similar um, in yeah. style and tone, and uh, with some twist. With yeah, it, I, I feel like it's got a Chucky reference. There. Where do we begin with this movie? <laughs> a a stranger drinking energy drinks. Yeah, in a Dodge Challenger All comes right, roaring into question. town. Are they actually energy drinks or are they or are they great punch? I swear are, it says punch on the side of it. Well, the name of the energy drink is punch. Okay, I and know. it's a punch. And the so the slogan is a punch of energy in your kisser. Okay, so yeah, he comes into town and runs over a zigzag, which spike strip, is a spike strip, basically. Uh, all four of his tires are are punctured, and um, he's stuck, and so they. Uh, tow truck comes and picks him up, says that hey, I can fix it. It's going to be a thousand dollars, but he they don't take credit and they don't have internet to use the ATM. Yep. So basically, he needs cash. He doesn't have cash. Um, oh, by the way, Nicholas Cage never speaks in this movie. He does. The closest he comes to an actual word is, yeah, pretty much. Like he he legitimately never speaks a word of dialogue in this movie. Nope. He is still acting to the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. And, is and, and, and the only the way that Nicolas Cage can do. <laughs> it is um, it, it is a sight to behold, I will say that. Anyways, so since he can't pay for the repairs, he's like, hey, I know somebody that you can work you can work off the the uh, what you owe. Yeah. And so he takes him to Willie's Wonderland. Yep. Which is a defunct, basically, kind of a Chuck it's, e. Cheese. it's a third rate showbiz. Yeah, showbiz Chuck E. Cheese type thing with animatronics, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, the guy who Tex, is that his name? Tex, I believe it is. Tex McAdoo. Yeah. Tex McAdoo meets him there and says, Hey, I'm getting ready to reopen this place, but I need somebody to clean. And so. Okay, I guess at this point we should say spoiler alert. Yeah, there, there's because it's a brand new movie; it's barely out. Um, we are going to be talking about it all the way through. So if you mm-hmm. haven't watched it yet and you don't want to know what happens, you need to turn off the podcast right here. Yeah, to be honest, we're not going to give you all the plot points in this, but there are, we will say some stuff yeah. that that is definitely spoilerific. Uh, so yeah, basically they say hey. If you will clean up this Willy's you know, Wonderland. The inside here, Willie's Wonderland, you know, and tomorrow morning, you know, we'll we'll show up with your car, everything will be fine, and you're free to go. Go on your way. Um, you know, Tex takes him in, kind of shows him around, little shows him where all the cleaning supplies are, gives him the Willy Wonder Willie's Wonderland T shirt. You're says, officially hey. on staff. Exactly. And then leaves and changes, they changes lock the door. Him in. Yeah, shut. 
Uh, one of the things that we didn't say is that there is a teenage girl who tries to set the place on fire prior to this. Yes. Um, and is uh, handcuffed in the trailer by in a trailer by the sheriff, who we find out later that it kind of adopted her. Yes. Because of one of these bully cleanups years prior. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's it's such a bizarre movie because she's got this this gang of, of other teenagers that they the, they're all they they all know that there's something evil going on inside Willie's. And they keep trying to burn it down, and they keep getting thwarted one way or yeah. another. And it just... Uh, it's a comedy of errors by a bunch of teenagers trying to do the right thing. I'll be honest. By doing the wrong thing. The the, the whole All the teenage stuff, I could do without. <laughs> I'll be honest. I mean, because it's one of those things we get into it, because, of course, it's a horror movie. And yeah. they eventually get inside, and... and you have to have all they the teenage all, tropes. They, they, you know, there are some, you know, there, there's two of the teenagers that go into the the birthday room and start having sex and the and, happy fun time. Room. Yeah, whatever it is. But it's one of those things where it's like if you know at what's going on inside this place and you've already seen all that, why would you start having sex? And then on top of it all, why wouldn't you stop when you see one of the animals in the room that wasn't there before? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just kind Especially of Especially when they realize it's watching them. Right. I mean, it just... Yeah, it, they, they could have done the teenage trope stuff a little... Hold on. And yeah. also the, the fact of like, there are, of course, all but one of them winds up getting killed and there's no reaction to it whatsoever. It's just like... Oh well, they're gone now. Yeah, I mean, it, they're. I say all this. Yeah, you know, these are the problems I have with. The yeah, movie, no, okay? I, I I can understand that, and they could have gone into they could have done a lot more, a little bit better. Um, they never give us anything about Nicolas Cage's character. My, as a matter of fact, he's only referred to as the janitor. Like, we I don't, don't have a name. We don't I have anything whatsoever. Don't think that you're supposed to get any background. We don't know on. why it is that he keeps setting his watch to go and have his energy drinks, and why he feels like he has to drink these energy drinks on at a certain time, and why he has to play pinball. Well, no, although the there is a text- although there is a wonderful. Now, hold pinball on. dance sequence <laughs> in the middle now, of this thing on. that is classic Nick Cage. <laughs> At the beginning, when Tex McAnew is running him around and giving him, you know, the instructions, mm-hmm. he goes, "Now be sure to take lots of breaks." You yeah, need, I know, uh, I know, I know. But but know, that's one of the things. Also, when when he first hits the zigzag, the first of it, yeah, he he goes and opens up the trunk and grabs a drink. Yeah, you know, that's kind of the okay that that would be really hot because it didn't come out of a cooler <laughs> you know it's like it's been in the trunk of the car this entire time that thing is going to be shaking all over the place it's and, a uh, black car yeah i know um nice it was a, a it uh, was a dodge challenger. challenger yeah and i mean it, it's just kind of it's just one of those things where it's there is a lot unsaid in this movie yeah. as to what's i mean even even as far as the when we start learning about what happened in willie's yes um you know there was a basically there was a there was a pack of serial killers well no that was in there the owner was a serial killer and a child molester right but he hired other yeah. people who were in that same you know yeah and then when they they died in a fire. Is that right? No, they sacrificed themselves in a satanic. Is that what? Oh, that's soul right. That's transference. Right. And so they go into the animatronics. Yeah, which is kind of the Chucky reference, right? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, and but then it's one of those things. Whenever the, the sheriff is telling, yeah, what happened, that like they escaped, and they started going through town killing people. Yeah, and so they made a deal with them that if they the, would stay in Willie's, then they would bring them sacrifices yeah they, they eat the people they would basically it, yeah. feed them right it's like you guys stay in willies you leave the townspeople alone mm-hmm. and we'll bring unknowing and unwilling right and so that's what they did yeah. they've been doing for years um but the the, the other the question i have is because the sheriff at the, like when when they come into willies after they they know what's going on when they get the phone call yeah and uh she keeps saying you know, you screwed this up because now they're really going to be mad. He's like, well, he's already killed like four of them by this point. Yeah. You know, so it's like, well, if he's killed four of them already, why are you worried? If he's in there killing all of them, 
let them let him kill all of them, and then you don't have this problem any longer. You know, I mean, that's the yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there that that's you know. Now the some of the, the the fight scenes are pretty fun. You know, just the fight scenes are hysterical. Yeah, I mean, it's just some of the the costuming is terrible <laughs> in this thing. I mean, like talking about low rent Chuck E. Cheese stuff. Oh you yeah, know? I mean, just oh, like yeah. wow, that that wow, they had no budget for this film whatsoever. Um, and honestly, that's probably what makes it so much it, fun. Yeah, and it is a lot of fun. I Sometimes, mean, just the fact that, and it's funny because every time that Nick Cage, like, and it's funny because the first time he encounters the janitor, encounters one of them. Yeah, he is completely not phased whatsoever. It's kind of. It's a, like he's run across this. Yeah, before. it's like he, which is kind of makes it fun, you know. And I'm not complaining about that part because it, it is one of those things where it's like, oh hey, oh we're gonna do this, okay. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Never. He never says a word, but that's exactly the way it's played of just like he sits there and looks at the, the ostrich. Cause that's the first one that, that he encounters. And it's like, he just sits there and looks at it. And the ostrich says something about, I'm going to eat your face off or something like that. Or I'm going to eat your face is what he says. Yeah. And then like he, it, it, by, tries to bite his face and like um, gives him a, a, a scratch. Scratch under his, under his left eye. eye. Right. And so, he just like starts beating the crap out of this thing, and I mean, and that's when at the point where you see in the trailer where he breaks the broom handle in two and just destroys this thing. Yeah, and, and, and at one point reaches into the ostrich and pulls its spine. mechanical spine yeah, out of it. It's like <laughs> fatality. There's several of those when he's fighting the uh, the alligator, yeah, and he does the whole King Kong thing where he like rips his, his jaws apart. You know, yeah. and it's just like what in the world? And what's funny? What I thought was was a nice touch is that every time that he does this, he um, he messes up his shirt. So he goes and cleans up, and he goes and gets a new shirt. Gets a new on. Willie's Wonderland t-shirt to put on. So he can go back to the closet, grab one, put it on, and go back out there. Oh, also in the bathroom, the fight in the bathroom when he yeah. curb stomps the one on the, on the uh, urinal. Yeah. The gorilla. <laughs> yeah, the gorilla. The gorilla. That was pretty funny. Uh, it, it's just, it's got those moments in it where it's like, okay, this is obviously the movie they were trying to make. Yeah. But they got a little too serious from time to time, you know. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but that that whole first, okay, I know what you are. You know I know what you are. Mm-hmm. Are we doing this? Let's, right. Like he, he's run across this before. Yeah, he knows exactly just, what situation yeah, he's and, in. Again, with us not that's, knowing any of his past, not knowing any of the That's the backstory I want to know, know. Is, is <laughs> How does he know what's going on? Right, right. And how does he know how to deal with it? Because obviously he's run across uh, this problem before. I mean, he just and like I said, he is completely unfazed whatsoever. Of uh, just stands there completely deadpan looking at this thing and beats the crap and out of it. As far as I can tell, the only two loves he has, or the only three loves he has, is that car, uh, punch, energy drink, and pinball. Oh, I know. Because he keeps going back to play pinball. He finds this pinball machine, yeah. and he cleans it up, and he just keeps playing it. And like I said, there's this wonderful dance pinball sequence in the middle. Yep. That it's just like, what am I watching here? And it's when he went on that, that – when he went on his break where yeah. he handed the switchblade to the girl – it was like I'm was on, it that one or yeah. was it before that? No, it was that it was one. Was that one? Okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah, yeah. And there, and there's a later he he gets a switchblade away from the the teenage girl. Uh, what was her name in the movie? I don't remember. Uh, I've got it right here. Uh, Liv. Um, <laughs> and like you know, it's one of those things that he <laughs> he got the switchblade away from her because. I forget. I forget exactly what happened. Uh, she was about to kill one of them with the switchblade. Oh, that's right. He knife. took it away from yeah. her. That's right. He took it away from her and then and killed it. Uh, and then and so they're they're walking kind of like, hey, this is my job. Right. Why I are think you interfering? I think they're walking into the 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 room, the fun room, or whatever the whatever it's super called, happy super fun, fun room. room. And they're they're getting ready to go up against one of them. Yeah. And his alarm goes off, and he stands no, there. No, they were in the arcade. Was he, that's right. They were. So in he the stands arcade. there for a second, like literally, like they're 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 like like facing facing off with with this thing, and the, phone, the his, his alarm goes off, and he he looks at his watch, and he looks at her, and he looks back at his watch, and then he just hands her the the, the switchblade and walks out of the room. I'm on break. This is so your she kill. ends up fighting it. Yeah. And while he goes on on a break and he drinks his his his, his drink and yeah. plays some pinball and then he comes back and finishes off the animatronic. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just like, yeah, what? <laughs> it is. It's a bonkers movie. It's not as bonkers as some other Nicolas Cage movies that we have seen. Um, we're going to get into one of those but here in this, a little bit. <laughs> this one is wonderfully fun. I like I said, the second it hits Blu-ray, I'm buying this. And like I said, it to my there collection. are only three people in this movie that I that are recognized. Of course, it's Nicolas Cage. Yes, Beth Grant, who played um, the sheriff. Yes, she was. Uh, I you've seen her in a bunch of like she was in uh, Donnie Darko. Um, she was in. Um, uh, the things that I keep, that jumped out to me, I know she was on My Name Is Earl. She had a re- recurring. Oh yeah, I she was one about of that. she was yeah. uh, uh, Donnie's mom on My Name Is Earl. She was I remember she was in Jericho, uh, the show Jericho from back in the day. But she's been in a whole bunch of stuff. She was in oh she was on doll uh, in Dollface. I forgot that's right. She's been in a ton of stuff. I mean it's one of those things you see like oh yeah her okay, and the other one is one of the teenagers. It's um. Trail Hill. He was on. He's on Cobra Kai. Oh, really? Yeah. Remember, he is one of the. Um, he is. Um, what's what's uh, Johnny's son's name? Um, you know what I'm talking about. It's one of his friends that he's running around with, like they're stealing from people and stuff oh, to begin okay. with. Yeah. Uh, I remember immediately. I was like, oh yeah, I remember because because it, it's funny because he he looks a lot like Chris Brown the singer oh, and okay. then remember there's yeah. in in Cobra Kai there's like oh one of them looks like Chris Brown and you oh, know yeah. It's, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but those are the only people and I'm like I have no idea who anyone else in this movie is at all like <laughs> no clue not seen any of them before <laughs> just like okay they found a bunch of unknowns the, the 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 girl that plays Liv was actually I thought she was pretty good yeah um uh, no, I agree. I think that she probably will, will find, you know, something down the line that will work to her advantage. Because she's she's a good enough actor, you know, with a little bit of, of experience. I think she'll she'll probably do something. But she'll always mm-hmm. be known for this because this is just... Oh, what do you think about the ending of it? I thought the ending was great. It, okay, so Tex and... Um, whatever the, the tow truck driver the tow truck driver show up you know and he come, of course he comes walking out and they're like okay you know and yeah he leaves but one of the animatronics the the, the pixie the fairy. the fairy yeah isn't dead she like climbs out of the, the the trash and blows up the car and herself apparently yeah <laughs> you know, and then they drive off and he opens up a can of of, of punch and hands it to her yeah and then they run over the other animatronic that's walking down the street. <laughs> I love all of his subtitles because he's the he's the Hispanic. Yeah, <laughs> all of his subtitles are great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it uh, it, it's just a it's it's a bizarre little movie. I, uh, from the trailer, I knew it was going to be bizarre. It's well worth. Look, I have I have some issues like this is not one of those movies that will go back in my rotation of of you know i i don't even i wouldn't even call it a good bad movie it's a passable bad movie is what it is oh no it's it's a total throwback to the b grade you know horror movies mm-hmm. that just happens to it's deal trying with... real hard to be a grindhouse movie yeah it's trying real hard um it just Which, doesn't quite get frankly there. i think Drive Angry is actually more, a lot more of yeah. a grindhouse, which we're going to get into here in a minute. Uh, scale of one to five, where would you put Drive Angry? Drive Angry? I mean, you uh, mean Willie's, Willie's, Wonder- Willie's Wonderland. Give me a. And you can do half stars and quarter stars or whatever. So. Are we are doing like five is the best? Or are we doing yeah. like ten? Is the, no, it's one between one and five. One and five. I don't know. It's an awful fun movie, but it's not a great movie. Yeah, uh, probably three and a half. Three and a half. You're gonna give it. That. I'd probably give it about two and a half, somewhere in there. It's one of those like. Sometimes there there are there are. Five star, two star movies. Yeah, and sometimes there are. Two star, five star movies. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it's like you 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 get those from time to time. You know, I, it's for a, me, this movie was. A whole lot of fun. Yeah. I really had a good time watching it. It made me laugh quite a bit. Yeah. 
Um, no, it did. It, it had its there. There were. I mean, I watched it. I was. It was just me and the dogs. And I'm watching yeah. it, and there were points where I was just laughing out loud. I mean, legitimately laughing. Like, you know, somebody's there's nobody just, around. It's you know? so ridiculous, you can't help right. but laugh. And I don't know. I, I honestly, I enjoyed this one more than I enjoyed Drive Angry. Okay, well, let's get into Drive Angry before before. So, I had mentioned Drive Angry last week yeah. on this, and talking about about good bad movies. Yeah. Okay. This Drive Angry, <laughs> in my opinion is an excellent bad movie. It's an okay bad movie. <laughs> the here's here's the thing, the difference the animation at the beginning of that movie where he escapes <laughs> yes, hell right. in a Buick Riviera. Right. It, that animation is terrible. Oh, it's, but it's meant to be terrible. That's the whole thing. There are there are no good special effects in that entire movie. Okay, let's be honest about that. Yeah, there are none. Right. Like I said, I watched it just a few hours ago, so I mean it's one it's fresh in my mind. And I remember watching it at the time and being like, "Oh yeah, this was a really low budget film." But this this the whole film to me felt like somebody had watched too much Robert Rodriguez Dust Till Dawn, very much, that and too type. much Quentin Tarantino, very much. Grindhouse. What were the two Grindhouse movies? Oh, he we talked about uh, Death Proof and uh, um, Planet Terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, somebody had watched way too many of those three movies right. and said, "Hey, I think I can do that." I agree, and didn't really, didn't quite <laughs> get there. I really love this movie because it does have that that throwback in some ways because there are <laughs> when we were growing up okay and you would see some movies especially yeah. when but they movies grind what they would consider grindhouse movies and go back hills have eyes or something like that you know yeah. um, those types of movies you would get these like it wasn't just that you would get nudity you would get like these really long scenes of nudity that were like kind of uncomfortable because there's there's so much of it you know <laughs> and this movie and usually goes there's there, a murder in the middle yeah, of it and this movie goes there a couple of times uh yeah. most notably whenever um what is the character amber heard's character uh piper when she goes back to she gets off work or she quits her job and goes home early and finds her fiance having sex with another woman and there's a whole fight that takes place outside of the the, the trailer. Mo- the trailer. <laughs> Which this movie is basically a trailer park of um, um, soap opera. Is what yes. It is, yes, it with is. With horror and, and sci fi elements involved. Well, Amber Heard comes home, finds his her fiance right. with another woman. She grabs the woman in the middle of the act. Pulls her outside by the head of the hair and, and right. pulls her outside and dumps her butt completely right. naked and punches her and all that kind of stuff. And then like she's fighting. I mean, it's just it is the na- the fat neighbor with the it's the just videoing phone. it the entire. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, it's funny because it's, okay. Let's let's start at the beginning on this one, okay? How 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 are we going to describe this movie? This is a supernatural revenge. It is a revenge cult movie. murder movie, right? Uh, it starts out. We the very first thing we see is a truck being pursued. No, the first thing we see is that terrible animation of the Buick Riviera escaping. Him. Well, yeah, but the first real thing that we see in this is we see this truck. These three guys in it, yeah, who are driving like a bat out of hell, trying to get away from somebody, yeah. And it turns out it's Nicholas Cage in a Buick, in a Buick Riviera, Riviera chasing that he him escaped down. Hell he, from. he escaped hell. It's, we find out eventually this is what this is what happened. Um, <laughs> I love this movie. I'm sorry. I can't. It just it, it's so ridiculous and so over the top. That, yes, that, that I, can't, is, I cannot disagree yeah. with that. <clears throat> Basically, the, the premise of the movie is that Nicolas Cage has been dead for quite a while. Yeah. He, um, he's he been in hell, and his daughter falls in, and her boyfriend fall in with a satanic cult. Yes. And the they try to leave. They have a baby. They try to leave. And the, the they come and they kill both of them and take the baby and they're going to sacrifice the baby on the full moon. Yes, to basically bring hell to earth is is what what they're they're trying yeah, to do. That's the purpose of the sacrifice. 
so Nicolas Cage is takes, trying to save his takes granddaughter. Takes the the Riviera and escapes hell, and with the God killer with gun. the God killer gun, but he only has three bullets. Yeah, which we find out later. And the account the accountant is trying to collect him to bring him back. Who it who is played. By William Fickner. I love William Fickner. He is probably the best part of this movie. And okay? he, he is he is gently channeling a little bit of Christopher Walken. A little bit. William Fickner is one of those actors who has been in Hollywood for a long time. Yes. He has he has appeared in some really big movies in small roles that were very memorable. He was in Armageddon. Yeah. You know, he's the one that that goes to his ex wife and and is like, Hey, um I'm not or no that wasn't him. That wasn't him. I no, he was back. one of the military guys. Yeah, he was one of the military he, he's he's been in a ton of stuff. Right now he's on the television show Mom. I don't you probably on on C B S. Okay. Uh he's and he's really good in it. He he plays a, an ex stunt man who's confined to a wheelchair. Oh, I've seen yeah, a couple and episodes. He's, of he's, a, he's yeah. wonderful in that. But he's been in all kinds of stuff. It, he's one of those people that shows up in everything. And he start, usually steals the scene when absolutely. he's in it. I I'm gonna go through just to to, to tell you yeah. some of the stuff that he's been in. But uh, he he's very you're, very you're right. He is he is. He plays he's a he, he's one of the colonels in the, yeah. the military. I had him But um, he's very gently channeling christopher walken in this movie he was in black hawk down yeah um let's see i'm, I'm sure we're gonna go way back on some he, of he was in independence day uh and the, in the new independence day not the the originally the the one that the, yeah the, the, the sequel. sequel that they did unfortunately um let's see i think he might have actually been in the first one too now that i think about it we'll find out here in a minute uh, let's see. My goodness, he's been in so much. He was on. He was on uh, Veep. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's the bank manager at the beginning of Dark Knight. Yes, you remember he is. he's the one that pulls out the shotgun and yep. you know and try. It. Yeah, um, he's been in, again. He's been in all. He was a Mister and Mrs. Smith. Um, anyway, you, you get that. I mean, he he's been on. Let's go back to some of his early early stuff and see. Uh, what he was in, he was in Virtuosity and Strange Days, which is basically the same movie. <laughs> he that's was in not, Heat. Not he quite. was in Heat. He that's right. He was he Virtuosity was in Heat. and and Strange Days are not exactly the same movie. He was in Contact. Go. Oh yeah, he's in Go. He is the. Um, remember the police officer that the two that um um um. Uh, Jay Moore and um, they're the, the two soap opera actors. They're like they're wired to trying to get this. Uh, they're trying to um, uh, do this drug bust, and he's he's the police officer that's with him. That that they he he invites him to the house. Okay, and the, the and it's one of those things where he was like, yeah, why don't you come? You know, why don't you come and have dinner with me and my wife and blah blah blah. And it's one of those things where like <laughs> you're getting a vibe the entire time, like. Him and his wife are swingers, and they're trying. He's trying to like get them to, you know, whatever. Oh but, no! But what it comes down to is he's actually an Amway salesman. He's trying to get them into <laughs> selling Amway because <laughs> it is. There's, there's all these like really awkward scenes of him like sitting next to them, like on the couch and stuff, and we're like, hey, you know, I've got this. I've got something you might be interested in. You know, it's a new way. It's a new. It's a. It's a lifestyle in and of itself. Blah blah. blah. And they're all like. What's he trying to get us to do? And then he finally drops it. He's like selling Amway. He's trying to get them. In. <laughs> Getting sucked into an Amway sales yeah. pitch has happened to all of us. Oh, dude. But, yeah, it's one of those things. That anything that he winds up in is pretty spe- – he is spectacular Yeah. no matter what. But, yeah, he plays the accountant. And his whole thing is he's got to bring – He's got to bring uh, Milton. Okay, did you notice what his what uh, Nicholas Cage's name is? The last name is Milton. His first name is John. Yeah. So he's John Milton. Yeah. I mean, that's like okay. Can you uh, can you put your thumb on that one any hard? Like you know, that's that's a little on the nose there. You know, whole John Milton in Paradise Lost, and you know, yeah. it's a. Um, but yeah, but so we got Nicholas Cage. We got Amber Heard, who is in this, who plays Piper. Yeah. Yeah, William Fickner. Yeah, Billy Burke plays uh, Jonah King, who is the the cult leader. Yeah, uh, David Morse plays uh, the, uh, his buddy Webster. 
uh, yep. which who was he was in Twelve Monkeys. <clears throat> he was on uh, Saint uh, Saint Elsewhere back in the day. He, he's another one of those guys that shows up in a ton of stuff uh, across decades. You know, good character actor. Yeah, absolutely. Two of the two of the characters I love. One of them is Charlotte Ross, and the other one is Katie Mixon. They both play waitresses at two different establishments that are flirting with. Katie Mixon, you might remember her. She was she is um, she was on Eastbound and Down. Okay. She was on. Um, she had a reoccurring role on Yes, Dear. Um, was that the brunette? Well, it was. Her, she played her sister. Yeah, it's the brunette, but she played the brunette sister on well, there. She was and on she's Mike on, and Molly. Yes, yes, she was, and she's also on. She's got a new show now. I forget what it is. It's on CBS. Yeah. Charlotte Ross. I know her from way back in the day. She was on. Um, uh, days of Our Lives. But she was also on in The Heights. You know, the How Do You Talk to an Angel? You know, yeah. She was, and she had a run on um, uh, NYPD Blue. Like okay. Like several years. You know, so it's one of those things. Yeah. She's the blonde, you know, the, the one later. And then the one where the, <laughs> he's having sex <laughs> with her. And she's like, are you going to take a She's like, aren't you going to get undressed or something? He goes, I don't ever get undressed before a gunfight. And so he's, there's this whole Such gunfight, a terrible scene. whole gunfight going on while he's still having sex with her the entire time. <laughs> and it's uh, it's one of those type movies of just <laughs> ridiculous. It's it really is. It's completely ridiculous. over the top. Uh, you know, Billy Burke was on um, um, Revolution. Yes. You know, uh, and he's been with much other stuff as well. I keep getting him mixed up with the lead singer of Train. I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. They, they kind of got that similar. Yeah. yeah. They boasted um, shave at Soul Patch. <laughs> well, where do we go from here? Yeah. Okay. So he's got he's in that Buick Riviera to begin with, yeah. which gets completely destroyed. Well, he uses it he as uses, a weapon right, against yeah. the truck. So then the whenever, whenever he meets Amber Heard, She's driving her boyfriend's um, Dodge Charger. It's a Dodge Charger, the '69 Dodge Charger. Yep, beautiful vehicle, which unfortunately gets destroyed over the course yes. of this thing. And then whenever he goes and meets Webster, and he's like, "I can't fix your car," but and he has two Chevy. No, no, no. Or, he's he, one is a Chevelle. One's a Chevelle. Four fifty four. Right. The other one is a '67 Camaro. And was it, it? Yes, it I was. Thought they were both. No, I they were it was a Camaro. Okay. It, it was the red and black Chevelle. It was the blue and white Camaro. Right. It's it's either a sixty. I think it's a sixty-seven. Okay. And they take I, the Chevelle. Yeah. I he, think, he says, I, "I know how you always love Chevelles." I think from the rally stripes on it, it was a rally, not a Super Sport. Mm-hmm. No, well, but it had the Super Sport. It had the the logo on the front of it. The she, the Chevelle did. Yes. The Camaro did not. No. That's what I'm saying is I mm, think mm, the Camaro mm, was mm, a rally mm, sport mm. and okay. not a super sport. Uh, which that car gets destroyed before it's over as well. But well, the Chevelle does. The, sh- the Camaro does not. Right. But the Chevelle does. But then at the end of it, that she is gets a- the Charger back. Yeah. Remember? Uh, at the end, Webster shows up at the end of it. In the Camaro. I thought it was. I no. thought I thought it was the uh, the no, charger. He shows up in the Camaro. I thought it was the charger. No, okay. it was not. Mm, it was the okay. it was the Camaro. I'm now, the, I'm the car guy between the now, two of us. The funny thing is that when <laughs> when the accountant shows up at her fiance's place, and <laughs> I love this entire sequence. I love this entire sequence. Okay, yeah. so he's like, you know, you get out of here, or I'm gonna I'm gonna take this bat and beat you to death with it, or whatever. And he gets the bat. He takes it. He takes a swing at him and he dodges it. He gets the bat, breaks it in two, and then pins him to the wall with one with one um, one hand with half of the bat with the guy. He he's his hanging feet, on the wall. His feet cannot touch pinned, the ground. His shoulder is pinned yeah. through the wall with this baseball bat. It's like what kind of car was it? Well, it was a sixty. It was 69 a sixty nine Charger. Charger. 440 or, or Hemi. Hemi? He goes, 440. And he just kind of goes, oh. <laughs> Which is the correct response. Yeah. The 440 wasn't a bad engine, but right. if you're going to have I a love 69 that. Charger. He just is that, that, oh. And then, like, he's trying to get, he's like, where do they go? I don't know. And he, like, hits the end of the bat with the other end. Yep. <laughs> 
and there's that whole sequence, and then the, the cops show up, yeah, and they're like, you know, freeze, you know, Paul, because they one of them goes in and sees, you know, what's going on, yeah. and he flips this coin in the air, and it comes down, and all of a sudden he's got an FBI badge. But you realize who the accountant really is, don't you? With that coin, mm-hmm. he's Chiron. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. He's yeah. the boatman, right? But he, he's doing that whole oh, today's your lucky day. He does that two different times. Okay, yes. the second time is brilliant. Okay, because they're running and they're, and of course now you know they're they're considered cop killers. Yes. So they have to. There, there's this whole roadblock of of the sheriff, you know, and all and all these police and <laughs> they're <clears throat> they're trapped basically. Yes. And it's like, what are we going to do? And then all of a sudden, this hydrogen truck, <laughs> this truck, and and the accountant is driving it. Yep. I love this sequence of him ramming through. And then, like, stepping out of the vehicle onto the, the hood the of, a, hydro- of a police... <laughs> the hydrogen truck is sliding sideways sliding side- along with the police car. <laughs> and he tr- he steps out of the ve- of the, the truck yep. onto the hood of the police car. Right. And then the, the hydrogen truck goes forward and explodes. Well, what's well, it, while it's, it flips rolling over, it's rolling. rolling. And then, then, then Nick Cage drives their vehicle underneath, between two police cars with this hydrogen truck rolling over top of it yeah and he escapes <laughs> and it's all like this what just happened <laughs> yeah which i don't know which one of those movies came out but fast and the furious has something similar um this one came out in 2011 so i don't know i have not seen any of those fast and the furious movies yeah, so except for the first one so one has got to be playing off the other I'm i just sure, got to figure I'm out sure. which one it is but and then the whole thing again they're like all a lot of the cops yeah. are like, who are you, blah, blah, blah. And again, he goes, hey, it's your lucky day. And he's yeah. like, hey, FBI, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it's <laughs> – there are some, just some crazy sequences like that in this movie yeah. that that are just like, oh. Uh, and, that and of course, I'm sure this was filmed in 3D. It was meant for a 3D release. And you can tell because there are several times, like, when he flips the coin up in the air, yeah. the coin comes all the way up into the screen like a 3D movie would. Yeah. It's like, and, oh, that was supposed to be uh, in 3D. The first, uh, the, when um, Nick Cage, when, at the very first of it, when uh, Milton blows the guy's hand off. Yeah. With, with the, um, and the blood hits the screen. Yeah, but then. also he, he the hand comes off and he's holding a crowbar, and the crowbar and the hand comes flying into the screen. Yeah. It's like, okay, obviously all this stuff was shot for 3D. You know, it's a... Uh, I would kind of like to see this movie in 3D because I bet it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> 3D gives me a headache. I know, but that over-the-top 3D like that, which yeah. did you ever see um, the remake of My Bloody Valentine in no. 3D? Similar thing, okay? I was never a big fan of the My Bloody Valentine movie, like the old yeah. one, you know? But this is another one, but this remake was it was shot in 3D and it literally it knows what type of movie it is because it's one of those things anytime that the movie starts to get just kind of a little bit slow yeah all of a sudden the killer comes out of nowhere and it's, it's pickaxe to the head of course the pickaxe is coming right at the screen yeah. <laughs> it's like all right it's slowing down time for pickaxe kill <laughs> you know <laughs> it also has one of those really uncomfortable nude scenes that like goes on for like 5 minutes this woman in a truck stop you know like running around and it's yeah. just like uh, this this needed to stop a long time ago. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this I I really well. There's a no, there's one more car moment. Oh yeah. When the oh, accountant, at the very end of at it. At the very end at of the it, end when of the accountant it, yes. when it's all over and the accountant finally is going to take Milton back to the prison, back to hell, back yeah, back to hell. Um, he basically and materializes out of nowhere a Mm -hmm. 56 chevy yep which is obviously a big block and it's fully black with the gold and i love when it comes out because milton says ah well this is proof that there actually is compassion in hell (laughs) (laughs) yeah and he's like i'm driving (laughs) yeah he looks at guy goes give me the keys yeah so it's one of those like i want to see the buddy cop film (laughs) milton and the accountant (laughs) yeah Yeah, <laughs> that's the other thing. Like when we find out that he's been gone, because he he said he's been away, like basically implied that he's been in jail, you in know, prison. And he he uh, <laughs> Amber Heard like figures out that there's something up because they go to uh, was it um uh, what was the name of it? was it 
what was the name of the bar they went to? Was it Bulls by the Balls or something like that? Or Bull by the Balls. Bull by the Balls. That's what it was. And she's like, I need to see IDs all around. And he pulls out his ID. She's like, this isn't just expired. This is a, this is a antique. Yeah. And you see that it expired in like 95 or something like that. You know, and you, and you look to see like when his birth date and everything is. And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, th- he, he's a lot older than he what looks. you would think. Yeah. And, um, you know, then she figures out that he's been in hell, you know, that, and all that kind of stuff. And he's kind of telling what happened. Or actually, Webster, I think, is the one that tells it what happened. Yeah, it and, is. And um, at the end of the movie, the whole thing it's is like, that, uh, no, no, sweetheart. I yeah. carried his box. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> I love that scene also. Yeah. When he pulls up and uh, they're outside the car and, and it shows him from the back and like Nick Cage had just been shot in the eye. So she was yeah. putting a, uh, a bandage on his eye. Um, and <laughs> Webster pulls up, and you got a, 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 a the, the vantage point is from behind uh, uh, Nick Piper, Cage. Piper and, and yeah. Milton. And she's holding him up, but she has her hand on the gun stuck in the back Which of his is a, pants. It's a 45. Right. But she's got, and it's one that's like, hey, whatever. And then it switches around the other way. Yeah. And he's got his hand on a 357 Magnum that's right yeah. inside the door. And then Milton even says, are you going to keep stroking that 357? Or are you going to come, are you going to put this car up on the back? <laughs> I love that that sequence of where they're both like hand on the gun just in case. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're gonna pull that smoke wagon and uh, stand yeah. there and bleed. Exactly. You know, it's a um but that's whenever they because it's one of those things when they're getting ready to leave that Webster keeps saying, You can't take her with you. Yeah. And he pulls him back into the back garage in, and had they have a conversation that you don't find out what happens till the end of it, that basically he had chosen her to take his granddaughter and raise her and raise her, you know, and uh, that's and a Webster was supposed to look after exactly, the both of them. you know, because he shows up and that's the whole thing. He shows up at the end. He's like, no, you got to go with him and take take the baby and yeah and everything. So, what did you think of Amber Heard in this movie? I thought she was great. I did too. You know, I know Amber Heard has got some serious. You know, I don't know if you followed the whole her and Johnny Depp fiasco. Um, I I didn't say that I liked her as a person. I know, I know, but but it's one of those things. It, it's I've that always, whole thing of separating the artist exactly. from the art. I have always liked her and stuff. You know, like, did you ever see All the Boys Love Mandy Lane? No, that's an actually pretty good like horror movie. Uh, that that again has this twist three quarters of the way through it where you're like, oh yeah, oh okay, you know. I mean, um, as an actress in this movie, I I liked her pretty well. The and, accent wasn't terrible. It wasn't the best accent I've ever no. heard, but it wasn't terrible. Um, but I mean, you could pass it off as she plays redneck really well. Yeah, I'll give her that. I mean, that's a when they <laughs> okay. Sa- wait a minute. Who says she's playing redneck? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I, I think there may be some <laughs> neck I, in there. That, Given on how she, she, her real life goes. Yes, I agree with that because, you know, uh, I don't know where she's from originally. And, um, and honestly, who knows what the truth is going to be between her and Johnny Depp at well, this point. Well, you know, it's... I mean, they're both kind of off the rails anyway. Yeah. Oh, you know what? She's she's from Texas. She's from Austin. Okay. So so, so she, she's she got... She knows. Okay, yeah. She, there's definitely some redneck in there. Yeah, there's... Because there's uh, some... you don't play this type of crazy without, without knowing that exactly <laughs> because there's this one okay it's in the trailer but they they clean it up but that she gets she gets kidnapped they go into a church at one point it's a, it's a setup you yeah. know and um they they think they killed milton but they didn't you know it's this whole thing so they take her and they're in this rv and they're 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 running. They they find out that Milton's still alive. He's chasing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, Jonah <laughs> is like, oh, I think she punches him or or no, something happens. I forget what it was. Or she's fighting with like somebody else, like I don't, whatever. Yeah. And, and she, he, and she goes, defeats everybody except goes, for the woman holding the baby, the driver, and, and Jonah. Jonah. And Jonah's like. I'm going to kill you. And she goes, maybe, but until then I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> in the meantime, I, in the meantime, I'm going to fuck you up. And she just can, stuff, proceeds to beat the ever loving crap. out of him. <laughs> And it's like, 
we've all seen that happen before <laughs> with with a, a certain type of woman and, where it's and saying, actually oh, the line is no i changed my mind i think i'm gonna kill you yeah <laughs> she's that's like, what it is maybe but in the meantime, meantime yeah it's like uh oh yeah that's 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 the kind of woman bring a baby into a bar exactly <laughs> to quote exactly. sweet home alabama yeah, you got a baby in a bar <laughs> yeah but it, it's i think she was really good in this you know and let's, let's be honest she's really easy on the eyes on top of it all i mean that's a she well it, she's ranked right up there on the the good looking crazy scale yeah the, the crazy the, hot scale yeah the the crazy is out the roof well it's the, the crazy hot matrix as it's called you gotta you're gonna have to pin the youtube i will video i will pin point. the video in here but i'm i'm going to do the how i met your mother video with, with barney explaining it she's not even on the hot crazy scale she's just hot wait hot crazy scale let me illustrate a girl is allowed to be crazy as long as she is equally hot <laughs> thus if she's this crazy she has to be this hot if she's this crazy, she has to be this hot. You want the girl to be above this line, also known as the Vicky Mendoza diagonal. This girl I dated, she played jump rope with that line. She'd shave her head, then lose 10 pounds. She'd stab me with a fork, then get a boob job. I should give her a call. Well, we're closing in on the half. Let's see how Blah Blah's doing on the crazy hot scale. She started the night here. But as the nights progressed, she's gotten crazier, but no hotter, which has caused her to drift across the Mendoza diagonal and dangerously close to the Shelley Gillespie zone. Another girl I dated, she gained 20 pounds and tried to kill me with a brick. But basically what it says is that the basics of it is the amount of crazy you will put up with is directly proportionate to how hot she is. <laughs> the hotter she is, the more crazy you'll, you'll, you'll endure and and with the sliding scale thereof you yeah. know the type of stuff um but it is uh yeah she definitely it, it's something now i again i love um katie nick or is it katie nixon is that her name um mixon sorry that the the first waitress um yes yeah. <laughs> she comes over and she's flirting with with uh with milton and uh she's like uh what can i get you you know and he's like, I'd like a coffee black with sugar. And then she comes back and she says something. I forget what it is. And he just like grabs her and kisses her. He's he's trying to get, she's trying to get him to leave with her. So right. They can go. Right. And but he but and he grabs her and kisses her. And he was like, I said, I wanted sugar with my coffee. And then he just like starts pouring sugar. And it's just like, what? <laughs> and then she's flirting with the accountant later, yes. you know, whenever he shows up. Yes, oh, one of the other up. things I love whenever the accountant shows up, whenever he, whenever he, he's like, I'm looking for a, a guy who doesn't look like he's from around here, about 6'1", and he keeps putting his hand up and it like, it moves every time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> about yay high 6'1". Six one. Six one. It's like, okay. Uh, what's the scale of six one for you? Apparently, so. well, I think he kind of realizes that nobody knows what six one is, uh, yeah, so exactly. he's just throwing his hand up. <laughs> but and also some of his like, he gets into a car. He gets in that car wreck, and yeah. uh, these two these two stoners come up, and uh, one of the the he kicks the door open and it hits one of the kids. Yeah. And he goes flying. He's like, oh, dude, you almost killed me. He's like, no, 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 you're not yet. I'll, I'll see you when you're 73. And he turns, looks at the other guy. He's like, I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> and he goes walking off. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> and then there's another one later where he looks at somebody and he says, I'll see you soon. <laughs> and he just like <Yeah>. walks. <laughs> and, of course, did you notice the, the, the look that he gave uh, Jonah? at the at the hotel like when he comes in uh with, yeah with okay and that they walk past each other and he just kind of like looks and like gives him that little sly grin of like he knows who he is and, and what's going on you know it's a and what's yeah. funny is when he's talking to the guy in the church and he was like oh you know we're gonna do blah 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 and he's like you know we're uh was it a was it we're serving you can't hurt me we're servants of the lord satan or something like that and he's like it's funny because I've never heard of you. <laughs> <This> is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you are really. Yeah. I've, I've never. never heard what is it? He, what is the line he he delivers about? Um, 
He's actually kind of a cool guy. I didn't say a whole lot. He really hates whenever people sacrifice kids in his name or something like yeah. that. <laughs> oh, that's it's, the other question. Other it's, thing, it's something like the that, guy, yeah. the 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 kid, uh, the stoner kid. He, when he kicks the thing, he's like, Jesus. He's like, Yeah, yeah, Carpenter. I know who he is. Everything. Uh, un, unlike what you might think, really like short hair. <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm Carpenter. Actually, yeah. short hair. Yeah, I know. It's just. <laughs> It's this little, they're all deadpan, completely deadpan of like, yeah, yeah. whatever, you know, we, we know this. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of the attitude that you would have if people are referencing somebody that you're hanging out with. Right. And they're like, that person's like, oh, they're famous. And yeah. You're, you're like, you're yeah, like, yeah, 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 just kind of whatever. Yeah. And, and okay, let's get to the God killer. Okay. The gun. Which is a cool, cool ass gun. I mean, it's, you know, it's. Yeah. Uh, um, he tries to shoot him. He tries to shoot the account with it in an early encounter. Yes, I guess in their first encounter and misses. He he scrapes it or he uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, he basically he he just scrapes his face like a bullet just grazes. Kind of bra- it grazes him. That's the word I'm looking yeah. for. And um, uh, uh, but then but the magical energy that surrounds the round that he's discharged that, and that's yeah it blows the car blows the yeah. car completely. And that's the off whole the with the stoners, you know, yeah. with all that. So later, because again they only have two, they only have two more bullets left. Yeah. Um, Piper tries to shoot Jonah, and he moves out of the way, and it hits one of his followers and destroys the RV. I mean, just blows oh, yeah. her backwards and everything. Come to find out what the God Killer gun does, it doesn't send people to hell. It doesn't send them to heaven. It completely, it completely destroys them. them. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those yeah. things where it's like. No, that you're end gone. of existence. Yeah, and so there is a what is it earlier? Oh, uh, when they're at, they're at uh, Webster's and he's like, "Hey, you want a beer?" He's like, "Only if it's in Jonah's skull." Yeah, I'll, I'll only drink a beer if it's coming if it's in uh, Jonah King's skull. You know, and so <laughs> when he finally shoots Jonah at the end of it, yeah, he just I mean, again, I'm I bet this looked amazing in 3D. Okay, just the way that this whole yeah. this whole sequence. But the only thing that's left of him is like the top half of his skull. <laughs> yeah. So and he's, he's sitting drink, he's drinking at the beer end of it, it. But when the accountant is like brings out the rolls and everything, he's yeah. sitting there pouring beer into it, drinking and just like, and he takes it and puts it in his insert pocket. Well, no, his, he was going to get rid of it, <laughs> and then he puts it. And, yeah. and then he's like, "No, wait a minute." He yeah. wipes it out and he puts it on the right, inside pocket. Right, right. Of his. My only question is: Are um, skulls of your enemy dishwasher safe? That's a good question. Now, again, one of the things. <laughs> I just ask him for a friend. When they when they get into the car, Milton says, "You know I'm going to do I'm going to escape again." And the accountant's like, "I'm kind of looking forward to it." <laughs> <laughs> again, I want to see the buddy cop film <laughs> yeah. of those two characters that are you know. <laughs> I, I almost feel like this is the the origin story of Ghost Rider. Yeah, I can I can 100 see this being a, like a, an unofficial sequel or a prequel to to Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider. or something. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. I really love this. You can tell I love this movie. Okay, I I like this above Willy's Wonderland. You probably Wonderland. loved this one as much as I loved Willy's Wonderland. Could be. Uh, uh, I give this one four and a half stars. Of uh, I would have this said, is an, like I said, this is an excellent bad movie. See, I, so. I would go like two and three quarters. Yeah. Okay. Well, two and three quarters. I mean, stars. Hey, we can't you know can't account for to, taste. To so me, it, a, it had too much <laughs> derivative of that. I grew up watching Rodriguez, Tarantino, right, right. Grindhouse flicks. I get that. I get that one hundred percent. You know, this the the big difference between the two is that this movie does not have any slow parts to it. I it's would not disagree. Act, with it's you. not action all the time, but in between the action scenes, there's stuff going on that's kind of building character. Whereas with Willie's Wonderland, uh, there are some really slow parts in I, I there, especially like, all the stuff with the kids. I felt I, like Drive Angry had some slow parts. Really? In it. Yeah. yeah. I, I had. Well, we will agree to disagree. <laughs> Let, let's put it this way: there were a couple times I found myself picking my phone up and really? playing a game, watching. Not, movie. not me. And I, and I had already seen this movie before, and so I didn't a, do that with Willie. Yeah, I there. Yeah, no, I, I got up a couple times during and paused Willie's Wonderland. You know, See, and, new stuff and this and, is why we fight over movies, folks. Exactly. I mean, it's again, kind of like anything else, we don't have to agree on everything. The only uh, thing I think we can agree with on or agree on on Nicholas Cage is a, is a national treasure. Yes, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've never seen those movies. Really? I, I care less. So. Ah, they're kind of fun. Yeah. 
Maybe. I don't They're know. They're on Disney Plus. Well, I know at least one of them's on Disney Plus. I don't Plus. have Disney Plus any longer, so it's uh How are you watching WandaVision? I'm watching it. To... Oh. <laughs> I'm watching it public domain. Sure. Uh, <laughs> He's stealing it. I know. Hey, I paid them money for a long time and didn't hardly use that service. <laughs> so they got their money out of me. Don't even give me that crap. So Plus, Disney's not hurting for money. So. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, I can't agree. We can't um, disagree with that. So, but, Disney has become the evil empire. Yeah, they really they have become that in the last decade or so, and um, they and just in the fact that you know they have they've bought up everything from yeah. our childhoods basically, and then you know they go and they they slap warning labels on the Muppets and and everything. It won't half distribute. Yeah, I know. Some of the good stuff. I know, and it's just like, oh, this no, is ridiculous. Oh, that's, no, that's racist. We can't have yeah, it anymore. Yeah, I have no problems, you know, going and mm. shooting movies in the Xinjiang uh, Providence. Providence and allowing the Uyghur Muslims to be oppressed just down the road and thanking their oppressors in the credits. Of wow, the we movies. went political quick. Hey, it's, hey, you said Disney's an evil empire. I'm just pointing out, you know, that's I, uh, I just, I, I dislike the hypocrisy. Exactly. I'm right there with you, and uh, it's, Willie's one. I think Nick Cage mm-hmm. should go to the Disneyland, Disneyland, <laughs> and straighten those punks straighten out. Straighten them out. There you go. So, uh, uh, I I was invited to Disneyland or Disney World um, coming up later this month for me and Xander to go, and I was like, I can think of about a million things I'd rather do than go to Disney World. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or spend the money on. When I saw the price. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was never going to be able to afford this anyway. So this is. Not- I remember when it was affordable. Actually, my in laws are huge. Yeah, were, were huge Disneyland you know, fans, and they had some of the. I think they've still got some of the the permanent passes. I have. I know my wife still has like a couple. I have things of stock that she got for a her birthday. Cousin whose wife is obsessed with Disney World. Yeah, and they go just about every year. Here's the thing. They got two kids. The oldest one just turned 20. So it's one of those things that they've been going for a long time just because she likes to go. And yeah. I'm like, there is something a little creepy about adults that are that into Disney, going to Disney World. And there's, <laughs> and they're not the only ones that I know like that. I mean, like I, I, I have other friends who don't have kids or have older kids who are not really into that kind of stuff who go – on the regular, like, you know, every couple of years or so. And I'm like, there's something a little creepy about that. Well, so. no, there are actually a lot of adult stuff I know, to do. I know. And, and it is, it's a resort I know. destination. And there are some fun stuff to do for adults down there. Okay. I, I even I enjoy Pleasure Island. I, you know, and not really that. anymore. Did they get rid of it? No, no, not really anymore. I don't know. I haven't been down um, there. And some of the rides are fun. I mean, it's like going to a big adult amusement park. Right. Um, Frankly, I'd rather go to Universal at this point. I the honestly last for time, the money, I'd rather go to the Redneck Hamptons. <laughs> Just gonna go to, to Gatlinburg. Just go to Gatlinburg, get a cabin <laughs> right up the road with yeah, a hot tub. Exactly. Um, we uh, I I've been to Disney World once in my life. Me too. It was I was about I cannot remember. I was twelve or thirteen years old. I was somewhere in around high there. school, and we were marching in one of the parades. Oh, see, no. I got to go backstage. Let's see. I we we went on vacation. And it was a, it was a family vacation. It was kind of cool because it was it was one of those where like uh, my aunt and uncle and cousins went. You know, we we all went down there, yeah. so it was kind of cool. You know, um, but the thing is, is I came away from that going, okay, there was like three things in Disney I liked, and that was it. Uh, we read we rode the um, of course we love Space Mountain. I thought Space Mountain. I nearly was great. lost my head on Space Mountain. You got to watch Space Mountain. I, I you know, that's uh. We went. We were riding it, and I had one of the. I didn't realize how close the tracks were mm-hmm. um, when you were riding that thing, and yeah. it took the hat off my head. Hmm. But Space Mountain, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed um, the. Um, it's not the mat. It was not the Matterhorn. It's like it was the Runaway Mine. Um, there's, there's another, there's the Matterhorn and then there's the, it's like a runaway mine card or something, you know, it's one of the, one of the roller coasters. Yeah, you know? okay. And then of course the Haunted Mansion that way. And oh. that was the thing I wanted to do the Haunted Love Mansion more the Haunted than Mansion. anything else. That was my whole, when we yeah. went, it was like, and that all came from Viewmaster 
Yeah. You know, because of the little view master with the Disney. Yeah, there was a Disney and there was one that was just the Haunted Mansion. You know, one of the Well, there was also the record and the Yeah, I know, exactly. So it was one of those things that I was like, no, this is a... And I loved it. I loved the Haunted Mansion. as a teenager in high school, I think I rode Haunted Mansion probably three dozen times in the time that we were there. We were only Disney one day. And, of course, the lines were... I mean, literally, I remember, like, getting in line for um, Space Mountain. Yeah. And there was a sign that said the wait from this point right here is just over 45 minutes. See, that's the thing. And I don't when we went, I don't remember the lines being well, they crazy were long. We were there. It it seemed to me like they were pretty comparable to Opryland lines. Yeah. Well, the other thing <clears throat> is that we went to Epcot. I loved Epcot. Epcot was the, this I loved Epcot more than the anything. The Tour of Worlds? Yeah. I well, loved that. When we went was when Captain EO was still playing. Oh, like yeah, it, I saw it was it, it was I a few it. years yeah. old, but it was but it was still like no, no I, this I went is to cool, Captain you know? EO. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, so that uh that and and just all of the, I loved all the Epcot stuff. We had so much fun there. Like and like I said, yeah. you know, me and my cousin are the same age, so we were 12, 13 years old and then the his sister's 2 years younger and then his, and then their brother is two years younger than her. So it's, yeah. you know, there, there's a four year gap between us and, and the youngest. But the thing is, we all had fun and we all enjoyed Epcot more than we enjoyed <laughs> Disney World. I, I love doing the, the tour of worlds and, yeah. and the little gift shops now, and the restaurants and the food tastings. The difference know. is that after we got done in Orlando, they, they came on back home. Mom and dad and I stayed for a few days longer and we wound up driving over to Tampa. And went to Bush Gardens. See, I've always wanted to do Bush Gardens for Halloween. And I really enjoyed Bush Gardens quite a bit. From what I understand, Bush Gardens used to have a, a killer Halloween. A, a supposedly the um, um, Evidently, the Disney Halloween is really good. From what I hear though, the Universal well, is Opryland the used absolute, to have one to have yeah, a great one. Halloween, I, you know. And yeah. I, I was actually in the park the Halloween that they had the fire. Oh yeah. That was we were actually riding the roller roller coaster, and we were mm-hmm. like, "Is that a fire? Mm-hmm. That's a fire!" Yeah. Um, but from what I understand, Universal's Halloween is just yeah. They're supposed amazing. to be. There's a few of the I think Not Scary Farm supposed to have Not Scary Farm is what they call it. That's you know, the it's original pretty, though. Yeah, that's the original. We are like all over the place here. <laughs> we can never just stay on one subject all the way through an episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that that's what, what I was saying though is that the whole the as an adult Disney has no appeal to me whatsoever. I, I would. Much I'm rather sure. Go to I'm Universal. sure that Xander would love it. Yeah, but. I cannot justify the money. No, for one thing, um, more than anything else, I just can't justify the money. Is what it comes yeah. down to. Because I know with my friend who's going, you know, of course, she's taking her two kids. You know, they're flying. You know, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, she has to go get them there in Arizona, and you know, instead of flying, and she bought all the tickets and everything. And she spent like twenty two hundred dollars just on plane tickets. You know, and it's <sighs> like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah. Granted, I would only have to go from Nashville to <laughs> still <laughs> to Orlando, but that is still still an expensive flight, and I don't know how my kid would do on a flight. You know, also he's seven, and uh, you just never know with kids never flown before, nothing like that. Yeah. So um, you just never know. That's what it comes down to, and again, I'm I'm poor. So <laughs> oh, you and me both. If I had twenty two hundred dollars right now, I'd be trying to find me a different car. Yeah, if I had twenty two hundred dollars right now, I'd be paying some debt. <laughs> well, the problem is, is that my car is rusting I, out from uh, around I, me. I, I like we were. I'm like I'm very I, confident. I'm. I know for a fact I need to put tires front tires on the front of my my vehicle, and I also need to replace the brakes. I know. Sounds this. like you may have, a and I may have something else that it's got to be. But I know for a fact those two things have got to be done. Uh, as so, of right now, I have a ratchet strap holding down the hood of my car. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, twenty two hundred dollars would go a long way to yes, some other would. stuff for me. And uh, so yeah, anyway, now that we now on that downer of a note, <laughs> did we mention we're poor? Yeah. Is there anybody like, out there that would like to sponsor us with a lot of money? <laughs> oh man, guys, thank you so much once again for joining us here at the Project Gen X podcast. We enjoy doing these episodes for you guys. I ho- we hope that you are, have enjoyed uh, last episode of us rambling through all <laughs> kinds of stuff, and then this this week continuing the love fest for Nicolas Cage, and <laughs> it started last week. It came into this week. You so. gotta love Nick Cage. You know, Nick. 
All right, since since before we before we get out of here, let's talk about Nicolas Cage, okay? Here we what go. What is your favorite Nicolas Cage movie? <sighs> the one that keeps sticking out is Leaving Las Vegas. Okay. I have not seen that movie that since is the, it initially came out. That is the most... That is one of the most depressing movies I've ever seen in yeah. my life, and I'm not quick to go back and watch. Now, he won an Oscar for that. You know, that was... I mean, that was... Uh, he, you know, that was... And he deserved it, because he's great in that movie. Um, the, the funny thing is that you've watched the trajectory of Nicolas Cage since then. Yeah. You know, after leaving Las Vegas, you had stuff like Snake Eyes and yes. Eight Millimeter. Yes. Con Air was after that. Con Air wasn't bad. Con Air was all right. Uh, I think The Rock was before that, or right around the same Possibly, time, something yeah. like that. Um, but then you get the Wicker Man remake, yeah. and you get the Sorcerer's Apprentice. And what's you the get, one that he's like obsessed with? Elvis. Oh, Three Thousand Miles. Of no, 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 no. He's not in 3,000 Miles of Graceland. He's in, um, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, I, <that> reverb. <laughs> I hit the mic stand yeah. with my magic glitch uh, There's a, a Honeymoon in Vegas is the one with him and Sarah Jessica Parker. That was pre- Maybe that. that's it. Yeah, and, uh, um, James um, James Kahn is in it. Yeah, because he's a flying Elvis. Like, he, he parachutes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the... Um, that one's a fun I was getting ready to say, there's several movies where he's kind of a, a, obsessed with Elvis. Well, you no, know, in that, real life, he's obsessed with Elvis. Oh, I know. Well, he married Lisa Marie, for goodness sake, you know. Um, it, it's, uh, he, you know, you go back, of course, people go back to uh, Raising Arizona. That's a good one, actually. That is a good one. Did you ever see Pe- Peggy Sue Got Married? I think once a very, it's, very long time ago. It's one of those movies that, like, it was definitely not made for us at the time at the age that we were when it was released it was definitely made for that those baby boomers who were kind of going through their midlife crisis yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah um and it's um um what's her name kathleen turner and nicholas cage and they're married which is funny because there's a it's huge nicholas cage yeah it's, it's and kathleen turner and he is doing a weird weird ass uh <laughs> accent or you know, like a a voice that he's doing in that. I mean, yeah, this is weird, you know, whatever. But it's this whole thing, of like you know, she gets something happens, she gets hit on the head or something, and she she quote unquote goes back in time to when she's like yeah. seventeen. Um, and it's you know, it's kind of it's like she's her now then you know type stuff, and and she starts learning some stuff because they're like on the verge of divorce, you know, yeah. and all this kind of stuff, and. Uh, it's it's an interesting movie, but the Nicolas Cage of it all is the real interesting part of it. I really like Wild at Heart, the David Lynch movie. Yeah, that's a good one. Him and uh, that's a good one. What's her name? Oh, um, uh, she was in Oh uh, Mystic. Wasn't he in? Was it? He no, went, he was in Moonstruck. That's it. Moonstruck that's is it. the yeah, one yeah, thinking yeah, of yeah, with yeah. Cher. Uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Laura Dern. That's a um, oh okay you know, yeah. There, um, he he's done some really interesting work over the years. Like again, Con Air is okay. I mean it it is what it is. I hate Face Off. I know people go about how, how great Face Off is. It's just not yeah, a good I've movie. Heard some um, rumors that they're going to remake yeah, it. Yeah, I hope they do a better job. I hope they do of a it. much better job of it. Yeah. Um. Uh. The. He was supposed to play Superman at one point. Oh yeah, um, I mean, there's even like production stills. In right, the suit. And, and there's and there's there's footage of him in the yeah. suit. Um, th- there's a great documentary called "The Death of Superman Lives," which um, is it was a movie that was supposed to have been made in the late '90s. It was going to be directed by Tim Burton. Uh, Kevin Smith wrote a, wrote a, a pass on the screenplay yeah. at one point. If you want to see a bonkers story about a movie that never got made watch the death of superman lives <laughs> yeah it's a great documentary i'll concur have you seen it you've seen it i've seen bits and pieces of oh it. no you need to see that I'll, I'll i will get you a copy of okay, it, okay? sounds good because I, I own that um th- it is oh my gosh it is bizarre 
It is bonkers the way that this whole thing. And it, it's not even Nicolas Cage. It's all the other stuff around it. Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. I mean, it is the 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 producer, all the stuff that happened in this is just bonkers. <laughs> wow. Uh, and it kind of does make you go, that might have turned out to be a fairly interesting movie <laughs> if it had ever gotten made. But it seems that like the mythology to yeah. it is all, it's kind of made it bigger than it probably would have ever actually been. Yeah, some movies are better left yeah, unmade. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, a, you know, I know one of the reasons that Nicolas Cage has made so many movies in the last decade and a half or so was that he, I think it was the Bernie Madoff stuff. He lost a ton of money yeah, and did. all that. Him, Kevin Bacon was one of them that, that lost a ton of money. And that there's, there's a lot of prominent Hollywood people that, that were completely taken yeah. in that and all of that, that Ponzi scheme. And that's kind of when you see him doing movies, you know, all these movies just on blah 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 on and on and on yeah, a lot of it is I, I do believe a lot of it is just paycheck. from running yeah paycheck. you know, you know paycheck. that's uh the, the when they made the sorcerer's apprentice you know it's yeah. basically disney doing a live action version of that fantasia okay yeah i remember i don't remember what movie it was okay but i remember sitting in the theater and the trailer for that came on it was uh jay barishaw plays the mickey mouse role yeah. basically you know the the apprentice or whatever you don't get the reveal of who the sorcerer is until like halfway through that that trailer. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's Nicolas Cage. The entire theater started laughing when he came on screen. And it was one of those things where it was like, oh, yeah, this is going to bomb. <laughs> <This is, laughs> and it did. It bombed hard. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was one of those things, again, it's like, oh, Nicolas Cage. Yeah, okay, yeah, this you can't take this seriously. You know, it's... <laughs> No, don't say that. It's Nick I mean, Cage. But think about how many yeah, I know. bonkers Nick, Nicholas Cage. Oh, I know. I know. Did you see the video of him Nicholas Caging uh, uh, Purple Rain at karaoke? No, I did not. <laughs> I need to see this. Him I absolutely his, need to see a this. A couple of years ago, him and his wife split, and apparently he was making the rounds of the bars and stuff in Hollywood. <laughs> and someone has their cell phone video of him at a karaoke bar and he's singing purple rain, but he's doing it in the only way that Nicholas cage can do purple rain. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> he seems like he would be one of the good ones. Like you went uh, into him at a club. Kind of like Bill Murray. Yeah, like all the Bill exactly. Murray stories yeah. of like, Oh no, he just showed up at our wedding. Like yeah. out of nowhere. You like know, I want, <laughs> I want Nick Cage just to show yeah. up out of nowhere and hang out with us for no reason. Nick Cage, because we know you listen, you're welcome to come on the show anytime. Yeah. <laughs> so we have lots of questions about lots of stuff in yeah. general. I mean, just uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, you know what his real last name is, right? It's something it's very. Coppola. Yeah. Oh, Coppola. He's that's a, right. He's I one forgot. of the Coppolas. Yeah, and he changed it. it in um, he's in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He's like a, yes. a bit like blink and you miss him type stuff but he's credited as uh nicholas coppola in that and he changed his name because he didn't want to be like given parts because he was a Coppola. Right. and he named he changed his last name to cage because of luke cage because he's a huge comic book geek. oh yeah but that that legitimately he said that he's like no he's like i was a big fan of the character luke cage and so i just took that as a so he needs to come on the show yes as need to Nick come Cage on the show and talk about we need to talk comic books we need I mean, to talk <laughs> comic books and we need to talk um, i know at one time he owned a copy of uh action comics number one really now i know he sold it you know when all the yeah the bernie Bur stuff. Out stuff uh but but he apparently has a huge comic book collection of like a lot of the, the, the golden cool. and silver age stuff so or if he plays any D D, probably that it's would a, be cool probably actually speaking of which yeah, we're all over the place again. We were worried we were going to get an hour out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I recently um, finished uh, watching The Big Bang Theory. Yeah. I know you watched it. Yeah. I absolutely loved the D&D &D episode. Yeah. Where Will Wheaton has, has the, the weekly D&D &D game, and it's him and William Shatner and Kevin Smith and um, uh, Joe... Um, Oh, what's his name? Um, he's married, um, he's married um, to um, uh, um, Sofia Vergara. Joe Mag... Um, 
Mangiel, Man, Mangiello or whatever. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, yeah. he was in, he'd been in all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know. And who was the other one? There was Oh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yeah. was the other one. <laughs> well, what's funny is that Will Wheaton there for a while had a – had, I don't know if it was a Twitch channel or or where Probably. it was, but it was basically it was a live video well, you know, stream of was it, of him and a bunch of his pl- was friends it, playing ooh. game uh, board games. Was it last year or the year before last that uh, Joe Mangiello? Uh, I, I know I'm, pro- I'm mispronouncing his name, but he had a a deal where it was like play D and D with you know that they yeah. had some kind of sweepstakes where like he was going to dungeon master you know he was going to yeah. DM for a game you know and you could come and play and I was like it's kind of cool because like, you know what's his name um, Vin Diesel is big oh he's and a so huge, huge D and D yeah, guy yeah. you know a matter of fact he, supposedly he has a tattoo of like one of his characters that he's played since he was a teenager or something like that. Yeah. Um, Somewhere packed in all the crap at my house is one of my characters. Yeah. That I've had since like high school. Never played D and D. Really? I have never played D and D. And you know what? I really don't feel like I've missed out on anything. <laughs> and, and I'm not one of those. Oh, that's all for nerds. It's, it's just like it's just not something that ever really appealed to me. The just, game itself is a lot of fun. Yeah. What's it's more fun social, is the know, social I camaraderie I have thing of sitting seen around the table. Other people play. Yeah. Like I've been in the room when there were other people. Like uh, the comic stores I used to yeah. go to quite a bit were. <laughs> Uh, my old podcast originated. They they had a D and D night that they were they were yeah. usually in there playing on the other side of the room whenever we were podcasting. You know, so I have been around when people are playing. Yeah, you know? um, it looks like fun, doesn't it? Man, not really. <laughs> it looks but, like a, it looks like a lot of sitting around waiting to roll dice is what it looks like. <laughs> it's all in your mind. I, I've I've played. Mm. I've played D and D basically since second edition. Okay. Um, at one point, I got rid. Of, uh, something happened. I had to get rid of all my D and D books. Mm-hmm. And when McKay's opened, I went over and rebought all of my Gary Gygax covered second edition D and D. We're books. getting very kind of inside Nashville baseball here. Yeah. McKay's is a chain. It's not just here. I mean, yeah. I know it's in. I think it's just in the southeast. It might it use, go on up use the, books, use movies, music. use music. We're talking vinyl, comic books. Comic books I mean, like all hardware, kinds of, gaming yeah. consoles, I toys. Think, yeah, I mean all kinds. I mean, it's just it's a used media. I mean records. It I is mean all a kinds treasure of treasure. They, they even carry. You know, they even get in like uh, musical instruments. Yeah, and you know, and and like. Um, you know components and yeah. i mean all kinds of stuff, cell phones but, and 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 ipods and, and i mean just all kinds of stuff like that i played second edition i at one point i had a full-time d20 D game mm-hmm. um i had a regular tuesday night uh, star wars d20 yeah. game at one point um what you were saying i know that i've got that original star wars role-playing book in there yeah, I but that's saw it. that's an old. Yeah, that's that is that's old, the old one, and the one, gaming yeah. mechanics on it was terrible. <laughs> now, it could be. Now the know. second one they came out with that was the D twenty. The mechanics right. on it were actually pretty good. Um, I have not played the new edition of it yet, so I have nice. no idea. But I know a, about a month ago, the Great Escape here in Madison yeah. got in a huge lot. <clears throat> Of the Marvel superheroes role playing game from the eighties, I've never played that a one. whole bunch of those those modules. You yeah, know, that, I mean, ton of them. And I was kind of like, I don't play this game, but I would kind of like to maybe have these just as a collecting thing. You know, it's a, now when I got married, one of the guys, well, the guy who DM'd my regular Tuesday night Star Wars D twenty game for a wedding present gave me and my wife the Firefly. Oh yeah, I knew they, I knew they game, had an RPG, which also. it didn't really go anywhere. But I've got the, I've got right. even like the dungeon well, master, you know, dungeon master, um, trifold, really a, a dungeon master at that point. You know, if you're if you're playing sci-fi, well, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> terminology. I know, I know. Uh, do you remember that there was a there was actually an MMO for Firefly at one point? Vaguely, yeah, and it vaguely is about all i mean it was online i mean i it may still be online i'm not sure but it was one of those things that that is such a niche fandom yes that i don't know that they had enough people to actually keep that keep the servers up yeah. and running you know and that kind of stuff i don't know it could very well still be going it was kind of one of those things where i was like if i was going to get into an mmo this might be one yeah where i can just kind of go and roam the verse and you know that type of stuff that would just i would like to just go and like fly around in that yeah, in that situation that. and you know uh but I was, well, I was trying to get to something i don't remember what it was now um 
I don't know. Just yeah, but the I whole, totally the, derailed I don't, whatever. The whole the whole Dungeons and Dragons thing just never like I read some because back in the, when you know choose your own adventure was a huge thing. Yes, but there was you know there were Zork books that were the same thing. There were yeah. um, Dragonlance books that were the, that were the same thing. Oh, the, I, I remember, there were dungeon, there were advanced Dungeons and Dragons books yeah. also. And I read some of those when I was because I used to love the choose your own adventure yeah. style. You know of you know oh well I could read this three or four yeah. times and, and not come up with the same story. You know there, there was the original cyberpunk yes. um, role playing game right yeah which eventually got eaten up and. Uh, Steve Jackson Games did a version didn't of they, Cyberpunk. Didn't they relaunch it not long ago? Well, no, that's the video game. No, I I'm, mean actual RPG Cyberpunk. Uh, if they I want to say there was, I, I want to say that they either they either relaunched it or they have announced that they are going to relaunch. That Cyberpunk. means somebody bought the old company because the company went out of business. Yeah, I mean it's probably Wizards of the Coast because they bought up everything. Remember, they bought TSR at one yeah. point, and they bought. I mean, they they own everything you know they they own magic they own yeah. uh, they own the, the dungeons and dragons stuff they own uh warhammer i mean it's just kind of actually that's no, going that's games workshop in it it's games workshop is warhammer yeah. Warhammer 40k and i know all this stuff because i used to work in a hobby store 20 yeah. odd years ago and so this was a huge source of but income for us i, I, I remember playing the original cyberpunk game mm-hmm. and it was all black and white i mean it, we, we right. couldn't even get color anything and it was all black and white paperback Mm -hmm. uh steve jackson games at one point did a version in his gurps system i was going to talk about gurps yeah because it's that that's all that's tell them what gurps stands for um you had to ask generic it was like come on just tell me because i I can't remember all of it it either it's generic universal universal yeah something like yeah something like yeah it is it's like or maybe general universal yeah. role play or whatever. Basically what it is is that the uh, the quote-unquote engine that it all runs on is basically – it's almost like binary code yeah. across all of the – But you can literally have a wizard – carry a, – a wizard with a cerebral implant, implants a from – A little bit of a huh? buzz. I don't know. There, okay, it stopped. It's that microphone, okay. But you can have a, a wizard with a cerebral implant from Cyberpunk carrying a Colt 45 from a Western. I mean, you can cross That's plat- a vampire. Yeah, that's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, or whatever, you know. And, it's and like, you yeah. can literally cross-platform all the right. games. And I actually have a copy of, is it Warehouse 31? It, it was a book that they put out that had all right, the right. weird sci-fi stuff in it right. that actually got their offices raided by the FBI. <laughs> fun <laughs> because evidently Those are the stories we always like to hear you know because <laughs> evidently you know they got too close to something ah, okay. so all right so uh, i think about 20 minutes ago we tried to uh, sign off <laughs> 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 and then we went through disney and D and gurps and <laughs> yeah, big bang theory a little well. bit and uh <laughs> so you got a little extra play for your hey, money. You know, we we are the kings of, of I won't say the kings of tangents because that's uh, <laughs> we used to know some people that were in a band called the Tangent Kings, uh, but it's uh, we we are really good at, at going off on uh, I don't know, on uh, side missions and. <laughs> <laughs> don't think we collected any gems this time. No, 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 man. I've been playing. I, I know we talked about Zelda. it, but I've been playing at Legend of Zelda, and I have put way too many hours into that. Thing. <laughs> I have put way too many hours into it. Uh, I've got a really powerful link right now, though. I can tell you that much with all the the, the hearts and stamina and everything that I've collected. But it's uh, um, yeah, it's funny for somebody who never played. RPG like you know Dungeons and Dragons yeah. or any of that kind of stuff. I really like RPG video games. Um, okay, for the most part, there's some of them. It depends on, on on. It really depends a lot on the the engine that they're using. Um, like Elder Scrolls has a really good engine. Like I really love the way that like all their you know like their 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 uh, the character progressions and you know and, sure. and the world and all that kind of stuff and this Breath of the Wild feels like they kind of just put the Zelda imprint over top of it. Now there have been other ones like Assassin's Creed that I just could not get into. 
I got or you. Um, the what was the? Um, what See, was I've been, the I haven't one? played uh, any of these because I haven't bought Dragon. a new gaming system since yeah, the original. There, there's Xbox. been there's been a few other ones that, that have come along. And, and actually, like, that oh, one was a, that was a graduation present for yeah. me. Well, it's like I love talking about the Xbox. I love the Fable games. Oh, I, I, I still I play, play the three Fable of them. games. Yeah, yeah, and it's one of those things. I was like, I would love to have a collection of those. Of course, I don't have a, a I think, Xbox any longer. I think I've got the first three. There were only three of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there were supposed. Well, they've announced that they're going to do another one, which I'm like, okay, that's awesome. That would be great. But I would love I'm, that. Yeah, you know, just like there's supposed to be another Elder Scrolls. I can't coming afford four hundred dollars on a new gaming system. Exactly, and I only have the Switch now, and I'm fine. You know, it's one of those things. I you know, I still have my old Nintendo. So it's one of those things that every once in a while I'll go back and I'll play Final Fantasy or yeah. uh, uh, Dragon Quest or, or Dragon Warrior in the United States. You know that some of those old, or the old the original Legends of Zelda or whatever it is. You know those yeah. those kind of open found, world quote unquote. I found RPGs. my original um, PlayStation. Yeah, and I'm trying to find the box that has my uh, Tony Hawk skating oh, yeah. game in it. Yeah, those Tony Hawk games were fun back in the day. Yeah. I remember playing that. It was at a American or was underground, and there was American Wasteland. Yeah, and those were a lot of fun. Um, I think I had underground. Yeah, I think that's what I've yeah. got. Yeah, and um, th- those were a lot of fun back in the day. And uh, I think they finally discontinued that, didn't they? Yeah, a few years back. You know, that's funny because Tony Hawk has said plenty of times that he's more famous now for the video games than he is for the actual skating that he did. <laughs> well, Tony Hawk is notorious for getting... Uh, um, mistaken for Tony Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you look like Tony Hawk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I get that a lot. So, <laughs> all right, we really are going to sign off now. Guys, thank you so much for... Because uh, we, could, we, could, we could do this for another hour. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. We, uh, we enjoy doing this, and we're glad that you guys enjoy it don't forget to uh like subscribe share you know go oh dude go check out our if you haven't already go and like us on instagram dave probably hadn't gone and looked yet but i've really been building that instagram following over there and adding stuff oh, no. and yeah that, so. <laughs> that worries me <laughs> yeah 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 you know dave always worries when i get on the internet by oh, myself no. <laughs> so <laughs> Let's put it this way. Dave and I both have access to that account. If anything cool happens on there, I did it. Uh, if something oh. goes if something goes missing, it was Dave censoring something that I did. So. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You, you see that now? So. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm awesome. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I am Alan Smith. I'm about to pass out. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>